back. Uh, we are going to be talking about uh, preventing uh, wildfires. And uh, our next speaker is actually a telecoms guy gone green, thanks to his, uh, his daughter um, a bunch of years ago, um, getting involved in a little protest. And uh, he basically rallying behind her and, and creating a whole company uh, that does some amazing things and that you'll be sh uh, seeing, uh, seeing in a second. Um, he is, of course, the CEO of Dryad Networks. Please give it up for the one and only Karsten Brinkschulter. Thanks. Thanks. Uh, it's a massive introduction. I hope I can live up to that. So um, welcome back to um, the, the series of talks. So as I said, we are, we're an impact for profit. So the, the main objective of Dryad is to have an environmental impact. We want to help in the fight against climate change. That's the mission of the business. Yes, we want to be profitable like everybody does, every company does, but we always need to do both. We want to have uh, profit, but we only do profit if there is impact. We don't do impact alone if there is no profit. We always have to do both. And we've chosen wildfires as the, as the main uh, initial application of our technology because there's such a huge impact potential. Um, and also a big business uh, uh, potential as well. Most people don't know, and I didn't when I started Dryad two years ago, um, that wildfires are causing 20% of global CO2 emissions. It's about the same amount as the entire traffic puts into the air. All, tree, uh, all cars, all aeroplanes, all ships combined. Wildfires are causing between 6 and 8 billion tons of CO2 emissions. That's an enormous amount. And yet it's not being reported by any of the countries, which is a shame, I think, because it deserves the same amount of attention that we put into electrification of traffic, industries, and energy. 20% is completely uncovered. Now, we want to help change that, in particular because 80% of wildfires are human-induced, which means either recklessness behavior, uh, accidents, arson, um, uh, or other uh, equipment failure, which is all human-made, right? So we need to stop it. We are the source of the problem. There's also a huge problem uh, with wildfires affecting biodiversity. We're losing between 3 and 4 billion uh, animals in fires each year, and biodiversity loss is as threatening as, as climate change is. Now, fortunately, you can say, almost ironically, wildfires are also creating a huge financial problem. And I'm saying fortunately because that enables us to create a business model, a profitable business model, to prevent those fires. Somebody wants to pay for that, right? If there is damage, we can prevent it. But with that, we can also prevent the ecological damage. $140 billion, that's last year's uh, U.S. damage alone. On a global basis, it's supposed to be three to four hundred billion this year of financial damage is caused by wildfires. Now, obviously, the damage is huge. The biggest, the problem is huge. And, and, and so how are we going to solve it? So there are satellites, there are cameras, there are drones, and there are IoT sensors. Now, satellites are great because they could overlook a very large area. Uh, cameras are good. They can overlook a tree uh, canopy over kilometers. But the problem with these optical solutions is they're just too slow. They take several hours after ignition before they can spot a fire and report it to the firefighters to then go out and extinguish, which is the reason why we're seeing all of these huge fires, because they're being reported too late. And by the time the firefighters arrive at the scene, the fires are already too big, and they can no longer be extinguished, and then it takes thousands of firemen to fight the fire and to actually extinguish it. So our focus is on what we call ultra-early detection. We want to detect a fire in the first 60 minutes uh, after uh, somebody uh, throws a, a cigarette, and then, and then uh, we want to call the fire brigades so that they can extinguish it when it's still small. Uh, we're doing this with a product we call SilverNet, which is uh, protecting the forest, silver, Latin for, net, uh, for forest and net for the network. So we're building a large-scale network in the forest to detect fires, report them early, and put them out. So we've got a cloud platform where we're doing device management, analytics, and alerting. Uh, but the key thing really is the hardware solution that enables it. It's an end-to-end -end solution that consists of three components. A key element is the, the sensor. It's a solar-powered gas sensor that can detect hydrogen, carbon monoxide, volatile organic compounds. It's solar-powered, no batteries, uh, super cups, 
works for 10 to 15 years in the forest, and we use built-in machine learning to detect the fire reliably uh, and then avoid false positives in reporting. But of course, we're using LoRaWAN, otherwise I guess we wouldn't be here, to then send out a signal uh, over the air to alert the fire brigades. Now, the problem in the forest is that we cannot use narrowband IoT or 4G or any G because there is no network in the forest. So we create our own network, LoRaWAN based, in the forest with gateways. So we've got solar powered gateways which are talking to each other, mesh gateways that can build uh, into very large scale multi hop repeater network in the forest, all solar powered. And we've got a cloud pl platform that monitors it all. So the key thing really is the mesh, because without the mesh, we wouldn't be able to penetrate the forest. Water absorbs radio waves, and the forest is full of water. So you can't penetrate the 10, 20 kilometers you get uh, uh, out in the, in, in, in the plain environment with LoRa One. You may get one or two kilometers. So that means you need multi-hop ne mesh networking, or you need thousands of gateways, each of them needing to be powered. So we solved this with this mesh gateways that basically act as a LoRaWAN gateways to the sensors and um, that connect to a border gateway and that act, uh, talks to the network server like any other network and uh, any other gateway would do. Question that I'm always being asked is how many sensors do you need? And yes, we need a lot. Uh, ideally about one sensor per hectare, roughly. But then again, if you think about that 80% of wildfires are human induced, we can actually optimize the system cost by focusing a higher density on se of sensors on areas of human activity. And that is where most of the fires are happening, right? 80%. So let's implement lots of sensors where there is a road going through a forest uh, or a pathway or a camping site or a power line or a train line, anywhere where there are human doing stupid things. That's where we put, need to put lots of sensors. In the remote areas where only lightning can cause a fire, there is no other natural source. We can still put sensors, but yeah, we can space them out more widely so we can bring down the overall system cost dramatically with this variable approach. On the, on the pricing, uh, we knew we had to go really rock bottom. So we're targeting end user cost of 48 euro, $50 roughly, uh, for the end user price, including margin for the resellers and margin for us. So the end user price of 48 euro, and then the service fee of 15% um, of that. And that was possible because we really did a, a class A device on the sensor, and we pushed the mesh into the gateway. Uh, so as you can see, we need a much bigger um, solar panel, obviously, because we get more energy requirements for a class C device. And that's we push to the gateway and to the border gateway. And the ratio, we need about 100 to 1 between sensors and gateways. So the price is really determined of the end system by, by the sensor. And, and the 48 euro is despite German manufacturing cost. So the whole thing is manufactured in Germany. Uh, and, 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 and we still are able to sell at 48. So where we are now, uh, we're going to market. We've been working on this for two years. Um, we just closed the 10 million euro funding round, so we now have the power to actually go big. Uh, we're going now from uh, small-scale POC deployments. We've done 12 deployments in southern Europe, uh, Greece, Spain, Portugal, uh, Germany, and then we, we, we also went to the US and South Korea. And now we're going to the next stage with uh, medium-sized uh, pilots with a few hundred sensors. Uh, we're manufacturing 10,000 units in next month and uh, scheduling and plan for 230,000 units next year. So we can actually support the rollout of um, going pilot to live implementations. So now if you ask me the question, how many fires have you detected? Well, I guess one or so that wasn't planned. All the others were planned fires. So we, we will have to go large scale before we can detect fires, right? So we need to deploy thousands, hundreds of thousands of sensors, and then we can catch one of those fires that some idiot caused. Uh, but that will not be, I guess, before end of 2023, 2024, when we can see the actual impact uh, of Dryad. Now, the POC deployments we're doing now, uh, just a, you know, we do like a, a few sensors, like 16 sensors, one mesh, one border. And then basically tell the customer, install it yourself. Uh, we send them a package. They hang it on the trees. They light a small fire in the middle of it. And the application goes, bing, fire, done. 
Um, that's much better than selling a PowerPoint. We ship it to the customer, they can try it themselves, it does work, and now they get the confidence to go to the next stage, which are pilot deployments. And that's what we're doing now, in, uh, starting from November, when we have 10,000 units available, we'll go to a few hundred sensors per deployment to show that the system can also scale. And it's not just you know, um, uh, one application that can work in a small scale. Um, we currently have a, a product, of course, which is um, ultra early detection. I think the value proposition is clear. Uh, we're detecting fires. We dramatically reduce the cost of firefighting, which costs millions in each incident. We, we reduce the, the efforts of, uh, effects of the fire, the damages caused. Uh, we protect human and wildlife, and we hopefully help to prevent uh, a little bit of climate change by preventing the CO2 emissions from, from those fires. But now that we have a large-scale IoT network in the forest, we can do much more. How about if we detected the fuel moisture? How about if we detected the subflow, the water that flows up a tree, uh, protect uh, the, the, the trees from being cut down illegally by detecting chainsaws? We want to be the network of the forest and to protect the forest. And by the way, there are about 4 billion hectares of forest worldwide, uh, still covering about one third of the Earth's surface, land surface. So there's a huge area that's currently underserved at all with IoT, and we want to change that. We want to be that network for that 30% uh, of our planet. Uh, the team, uh, we, we've been a, a team of seven co-founders. My background is telecoms, unfortunately, for 25 years. I've spent talking and selling to carriers, which never leads to anything. Um, it's very difficult markets. I'm glad that I'm out of it. And we can sell and build networks on our own, thanks to LoRaWAN and the Things Network, which we use as a stack. Um, so we, that's my background. Uh, we've got a co-founder on hardware. We've got a finance guy on board, uh, uh, somebody who knows really embedded systems. Um, uh, Jerry and knows the cloud. We also have a scientist who knows the forest because we guys, we tech guys, don't know much about it. And a sales guy. We're now 23 people. We'll be about 30 by the end of the year. And we want to uh, scale the company globally uh, to help eventually in the fight against climate change, which is the biggest threat that we're facing as a humanity. Uh, the Swiss Re, a uh, big Swiss company in insurance, uh, projects that the next decade, the damage from fires will double. So we're already seeing massive fires this year. Uh, Swiss Re says it's going to double over the next 10 years each year. Uh, we need to stop this. We need to stop this now. And, and Dryad is about connecting the natural world and protecting one of our most vital ecosystems, the forest. Thank you very much. No, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you so much. Um, I, I really enjoyed that. I had no idea that 20% of all carbon uh, output is caused by wildfires most of them human-induced. That's insane. Um, thank you so much for, for doing something about it. Uh, we're going to continue on this, uh, this road of decarbonizing, and our next talk is going to be on this topic as well, also using Laura Wan uh, to do that. So looking forward to that. That will be in seven minutes. See you then. <laughs>